Hi everyone, Todd from Sideshow Effects again, and in, in this video I'm going to show you how to go through the installation process of our new Photoshop Pro Toolkit pack, and then I'll get into showing you just very quickly how to customize it. So when you download the pack, this is roughly what you're going to see in your download folder. Uh, I'm, I'm recording this now just prior to release, so there may be a few things here that are slightly different, but this is largely what you're going to see. So uh, you've got an icons folder and inside of here are the different sets of icons. Each one of these sets has over 900 icons. They're all identical. Uh, each of these sets is identical, identical to each other except for uh, the design of, of them. So for example, we have a uh, unlabeled icon, same icon we have labeled and we have a color unlabeled on a colored background and each one of the menu items is on a different color and color labeled so that's where all the icons sit and and I'm going to show you uh, when we get into a customization how you can access these and, and use them to customize your own profile there's Nikon's extra folder, and this is just holding uh, some brushes icons and swatches icons, which we're going to show in just a minute. But there are three files that you need to install, and this is the most important part uh, to make sure that everything works as uh, as expected. So the first one, of course, is the keyboard shortcuts. When, uh, as you're aware, with Stream Deck, uh, our our profile packs work work largely off of shortcut commands and so we have created a shortcut file in Photoshop that maximizes and creates as many shortcuts as we could possibly fit in with the modifier keys to give you access to as many of the functions as we can. So this keyboard shortcut file needs to be placed into the appropriate folder on your system so that Photoshop can read the appropriate keyboard shortcuts. And of course in the in the folder you can see we're divided between Mac and Windows. I'm going to show you the Mac first and right afterwards we'll show you where to install it on Windows. So on the Mac system where this is going to go is you need to uh, access your user library folder. Now most people will have the library folder visible. If you don't you can go to your finder menu at the top here, uh, hold down the option key and press on go and you will see library right there. So I've got the folder already open. I'll drag it over here. And this is your, as you can see, the file path down here, your computer, users, your username, and library. And this is where we are right now. So this file is going to go under your library folder, application support, Adobe, and into your current running version of Photoshop that you're normally using. So in this case, I'm using Photoshop 2021 and into the presets folder of that. We'll open that up and you'll see as you scroll down, there's a keyboard shortcuts folder here. That's where you take this file and drag it into the keyboard shortcuts folder. I've already got it there, so I'm not gonna do that. And there are two other files that also need to be copied over. Underneath it, we have Photoshop Actions. It's just a small actions file, and that will go in the same presets folder under Actions. You'll click and drag that into the Actions folder. And the same thing with the Brushes. The Brushes file will go into the Brushes folder there. So on the Windows side, what you'll do is you'll go to your username, App Data, Roaming, and into Adobe and your current version of Photoshop you're running into their presets folder and you'll see the actions, the brushes, and the keyboard shortcut folders there and the appropriate files will go into each of those. The uh, keyboard shortcuts, the brushes, and the actions will be clicked and dragged into those folders and you'll be all set in the Windows side. And you'll need to restart Photoshop in order for these shortcut files to appear in the drop down menu. Now when we go to Photoshop right now and we're going to edit keyboard shortcuts and you get this dialog box. Under set, this is where you're going to find that file that you've just imported. If you've restarted, it will show up in this dialog box and you gotta make sure that you select Photoshop Sideshow FX Pro Toolkit. And always have that as your keyboard set running 
in order for the Stream Deck to understand which shortcuts have been applied. Okay, so we would say okay. Secondly, we uh, just installed actions and brushes. We want to bring those in here. So if I pull down the actions palette and in the flyout menu, we go to load actions. We would navigate to that actions folder where we drop the file and we would just install that. I have already installed it. It's right down here at the bottom. So these will drive some brushes that I'm going to show you in a few minutes. These along with the brushes that we also dragged over. So we can go to our brushes palette, the flyout menu, load up import brushes, and you would load up those brushes that you just copied over. Once again, I already have them installed, they're right here. So we can just collapse that. And now we're all set up here. So then the next thing to do, I'll minimize Photoshop right now, is we need to import the Stream Deck profile into your Stream Deck device. So in the Stream Deck folder, once again, divided into Mac and Windows, and further divided into a regular, which is your 15 key device, or an XL. I'm running an XL right now, so the, the process is, is exactly the same, depending on which device you're actually running. So it's very simple to import the correct Stream Deck profile. So you click on the gear icon in Stream Deck, and at the bottom flyout menu, click Import. You navigate to the correct folder. We're in the XL, and we can import either one of these. Now you see there's two here. They're both identical to, to each other, except one has color menus and the other one does not. So it's just a personal choice which one you want to import. Now I've already imported, so I'll show it to you here. This is the regular layout, and I can switch over very quickly to the color version and just show you what that looks like. So these are color menus that are identified by, by different colors. I'll switch back over to the, the regular one and we'll just work off of this one. So now with this Stream Deck loaded and with the correct keyboard shortcuts loaded up in Photoshop, you'll find that when you press on a key on your device, and I can switch over to layer, create a new layer, and it comes up with a dialog box to create a new layer. Say OK. Now to quickly just show you what the uh, what we've got in the pack here, these are all your uh, menu commands on the left hand side. On the right hand side are swatches that we've included and I'll go into those in detail but uh, just quickly in the menu section in some of the menu items you have sub menus as well uh, to allow for more keyboard shortcuts to be placed in here. We, we have some adjustment layers and some alignment tools that sort of thing. Now what we also have uh, in the in the menus here is we have an Art Studio button. Now what's in here is a whole set of pre-built brushes for you that you can switch to on the fly. Now here I'll show you how that works. Uh, I'll put this down here for a second. We'll bring up Photoshop. And with our brush active, and let's activate a layer here, we can access on the fly just at the press of a button any of these pre-built brushes. So if I go to let's say the the oval brush here it switches our brush to oval and we can draw with that and we can go to one of our chalk brushes and we can now use a chalk brush go to a hard angle right for example and we can use that. So it just allows you at your fingertips to change to different brushes. In addition, you'll also notice that we've got a swatches folder here inside of Art Studio. It's the same as the swatches that appear on the main menu. These are different swatch sets set in, in nine different color themes. So for example, if we go into Vibrant, we are presented with 14 different Vibrant color themes. When we click when we click on any one of these, it opens up a palette that gives us five color swatches and a swatch builder. Now let me bring this down here and I'll show you how this works. In Photoshop, in your color palette, you should always make sure, usually it is the case that the foreground color is active, but you want to make sure that foreground color is active on this. You don't have to have it open. You just got to make sure your foreground color is active. Now when you select any of these buttons on your device, it will create that color and put it in the foreground color swatch. So for example, we'll press red 
It changes your foreground color to the red, to the yellow, to the mauve, etc. Now the swatch builder on the bottom here, what this one does is when you have your swatches open, you don't need the swatches open, this will build it in the background, but we have the swatches open here just so we can show that when I press this swatches builder button, it will build these five swatch panels. So let's see how that works. We're pressing the swatches builder button. And there you go, it builds that for you and you can access these at any time. So that's the main functionality of the Pro Toolkit. But as always, you don't have to stay stuck to the way the profiles come shipped. You can easily customize it to how you like to work. Let's say, for example, let's go to the layer, uh, go into styles. And uh, we have some styles here, but not all of them are listed. For example, we don't have satin. So we want to create a, a shortcut key for the satin layer style. Let's say we don't use pattern overlay. Well, these obviously are very easy to just get rid of. You just click on it, hit the delete key and it's gone. So if we want to create a satin layer style key, quickest way to do that is to select any of these keys, select it, press control C and in the empty button square space, any one of these command V makes a complete copy of that key. Now we're going to change the title of it to satin, just so we remember what it is. And we're going to change the icon and that's where our icons come in handy. So we can go to the icons and once again, these are four different styled icons. Right now, this set is using the regular, so in other words, not colored, uh, the regular labeled set. But it doesn't mean you can't put a colored one in here if you wanted to. If you want it to stand out, why don't we do that just for argument's sake. So we can go to the color labeled, into menu commands, go down to layer, and it should be in layer styles. And go down to satin, and there it is there. And we just drag that over onto our button. And we can see it's got a deep blue background on it. But it's not going to do anything until we assign a proper short key to it. See, because we copied the gradient overlay, it's still got the gradient overlay shortcut. So we have to assign a shortcut to this satin layer style. So you go into Photoshop, go into your edit keyboard shortcuts, go down to the layer style where you find satin. Here it is here, and it, you can see that it doesn't have a shortcut applied to it. You need to apply a shortcut that doesn't already exist. If we were to try and apply a shortcut that already exists in this file, let's say uh, Shift Command K, if we were to do Shift Command K, it will give us a warning saying that it would be removed from layer style Babylon Boss if we accept it. Well, we don't want to do that, so we're going to undo that. Instead, we'll have to select a shortcut that hasn't been used. I happen to know that Control Command tilde has not been used in this keyboard shortcut file. So I can press that now, Control Command tilde. It's been applied. There's no conflict. I say accept. I can choose to save it into this file. Just say OK. Go back to Stream Deck and this is where we enter in that same keyboard command. Control Command tilde. And now when we go to Photoshop, with our layer selected, and we go to our device and we press on satin, it applies the satin layer style. So it's very easy to customize and uh, we can move things around if you don't like the way we've, we've laid things out. You can remove them, move them around, place them wherever you like, how you like to work. Even copying and pasting into different pages is very simple, just select one at a time. Unfortunately, Stream Deck does not allow you to copy and paste multiple items at this time. So if I want to use this layer style all the time and I want it on my main page, I can just select it, copy, go to the main page, and select an empty button, hit paste, and it's there for me whenever I need it. And we can also do that with the swatches. So if we go to Art Studio here, the same swatches, as I mentioned, is, is uh, in this spot. If we go into Vibrant and we say, okay, I want to copy this set 
but I want it on my main artboard page because I'm going to be using them all the time. So once again, we can cut and paste these five swatches into our art studio. And we can paste them in here if we like. So I can do that quickly. I, I, of course, all the buttons are taken here. Let's say I don't need these five keys at the bottom here. Well, let's delete those. I'm going to paste in that red I copied. And there you go. And now when I work in Photoshop, not only do I have my brushes that I can switch between, I can also change colors on the fly. Simple as that. So there you have it. That's how you can set up very quickly and uh, modify things to how you like to work. So I encourage you to check out our support page if you have any additional questions. If you have, if the support page doesn't answer your questions, by all means, send us an email or hit us up on the chat that's on the bottom right of our website. Thanks again for checking us out. Hope you enjoy the packs. Till next time.